Hello and welcome my friends. This is Jennifer from Mystic Star. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today and watching this video. This is another unboxing video. I won't lie, there's been a lot of decks coming up that have really caught my attention. This deck, as you can tell from the prime box here, the prime uh, envelope, it is more of a mainstream deck. I do really enjoy supporting those little unknown or lesser known decks. This deck I've been waiting for. There's a number of larger or well-known deck creators that are bringing out new decks that I can't wait for. And this is one of them. So let's get into this because I, I absolutely adore her work. Oh, there's that. All right. So this deck I've been waiting for. Barbara Moore has created a number of decks that I absolutely adore. One of them I actually used last week in my readings, which is the, uh, what is it? The Tarot of the Hidden Realm. This is called the Wizard's Tarot. Very much in line with some of her other work, but also in line with a, a deck that's very, uh, well, very well uh, requested when I do my readings at different events, and then also um, in uh, personal readings. It's a beautiful entry into this. I can't, oh, what a fantastic picture of the um, tower. So as you can tell, this is very much in that wizarding world and it's going to be a beautiful deck. And I can just tell how my clients are going to respond to this, how they're going to want this deck to come forward. Me being a dragon fan, I work a lot with the dragons. I absolutely love the back of this deck. And there's the beginning, the fool. So let's get into this. I won't lie, they packaged it well. So, oh, the anticipation. Lots of plastic. Recycle that in a minute. So there you go, the fool. What a beautiful card. I like the size already because it fits in my hand. It's not one that's oversized. I won't lie, some of the oversized ones can get really challenging to shuffle and can be a, a bear for my clients to shuffle. So we've got the Fool. That's fantastic. I love that magician. The High Priestess. The Empress. The Emperor. The Hierophant. How wonderful. I love his hat. The lovers. Of course the chariot. A beautiful chariot. Strength. I enjoy the dragon over the lion. It's a refreshing change. The hermit. That Merlin-esque type energy. What a beautiful wheel of fortune. Justice. It's an awesome hangman. Death. And sometimes that's really how death feels. I love it. Temperance. The devil. And there's that tower that we saw. Beautiful. The star. It's actually one of my favorite major arcana, and I really enjoy this rendition of the the star, the moon, the crayfish there, fantastic. I like how the, the wolf and the dog are really looking in and checking out that crayfish. What a beautiful sun. Judgment, the world, oh, now we're into the aces. Oh, okay. So it looks like instead of going through each suit, we're going to go through each number. So the Ace of Wands, the Cups, the Holy Grail, Ace of Swords. I like how they have the um, the wreath and uh, the garland here in that infinity symbol and then also 
wrapped around the sword opposed to a crown on top of the sword. And then of course the pentacle. So the twos, that wand, the cup, that lesser lovers, the everyday aspect of the lovers, fantastic. The two of swords, two of pentacles. I'm enjoying the feel of this. It's still got that cheeky feeling, yet it's it connects in on a different level. It brings out some of the more hidden qualities that some of these cards have. The Three of Wands, the Three of Cups, Three of Swords. It's a very different rendition of the swords. Doesn't have the heart, but it does talk about the heart of the matter. And then the Three of Pentacles. The Four of Wands, Four of Cups. That's a very cool way of doing this Four of Swords. And the Four of Pentacles. Probably the most challenging number of the deck. The Wands, Five of Cups, Five of Swords, Five of Pentacles. Six of Wands, Six of Cups, Six of Swords, Six of Pentacles. Seven of Wands, Seven of Cups, those seven deadly sins, Seven of Swords, Seven of Pentacles. The Eight of Wands, I like how we have the movement of the wands in a different way. Usually it's coming from the heavens and descending into the earth. They're literally getting up and going there. Eight of Cups. Eight of Swords. Again, I like the different positioning of the, the camera. It can easily be that same woman with the swords wrapped around her and her, her hands tied and she's really feeling that binding. And the Eight of Pentacles. That very skilled and, and high precision card. The Nine of Wands, I like the backing here because many times we I talk about those uh, higher realm and passed on loved ones supporting us and you really feel it in this card. Nine of Cups, Nine of Swords, Nine of Pentacles, it's a sassier Nine of Pentacles, I like it. The Ten of Wands, very different feel than that workhorse feeling. The Ten of Cups, the Ten of Swords. Again, we have different positioning, but very similar energies there. And the Ten of Pentacles. We get into the pages. So there's the Wands. I like the cups. I like that they kept the fish. I do enjoy it when the page of cups keeps the fish. It's one of my favorite pieces of that, that card. The page of swords. And the page of pentacles. Now pages are can be genderless. They're sometimes male and sometimes female. It's that very childlike, innocent quality. All of these are adults. However, they do give that kind of inquisical energy to them. Many times creators will see the, um, the page as that female energy, the daughter, if you will, and they use the knight as the son. So we have the knight of wands, who's a female in this deck. The knight of cups, the lancelot of knights, is male. 
the swords, female. And I like the two uh, knights that are really usually full charge out being female. I like that dynamic. And then the pentacle. It actually could be either way. It's got a very feminine face, yet could be masculine. I'd have to read up it, it on what it is they really put her at, uh, put that card as. However, I like the neutrality when you look at it. Then there's no denying the queens. The wands, I like it. She's got some sass. I enjoy this headpiece. It's very attractive. The queen of cups. The queen of swords. The owl catches my attention right away. Love it. And of course the queen of pentacles. Now usually the queen of pentacles is the only um, royal or monarch that is actually looking at her pentacle. She's not here. So that's an interesting switch. And of course we end up on our kings. The wands. The cups. The swords. And then Midas, the king of pentacles. I'm really enjoying this deck so far. I like the quality of the card and how it's not too shiny and it still has that malleability of the card. So I can't wait to get into this deck and start using it. Of course, I'm going to clear it and charge it here before I do. And then don't be surprised if you don't see it the next week in some of my group readings. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today and watching this video. I hope you found it fun and insightful and that you're able to see a deck in a different light that is just coming out and possibly if you want like always I'll have a link below so if this deck catches your attention you can go check it out for yourselves and like always guys if you like this video please remember to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel there's so much more coming your way with some new decks until tomorrow my friends